Biting the Hand That Starves Us is the title of my presentation. And the reason I chose this title is because all too often internal communicators complain that they are being starved of resources and that they're not being given adequate uh, attention within the role that they hold. And uh, uh, what my research found is that uh, internal communications in both the public and private sector, national and multinational organisations in Ireland, is not really very strategically planned. And that's part of the problem. So if you imagine a business that isn't concerned with profit or isn't concerned with return on investment, if you imagine paying somebody for a service and you can't actually say how valuable that service has been, if you can imagine that, you can imagine internal communications that isn't measured effectively. But it's not just down to measurement. There are a lot of other elements that we need to get right if we're going to have effective internal communications. So let's take a trip through my research. So the, I have divided the uh, research into four main categories just for presentation here today. So it's on strategy, leadership, communication tools and measurement, and they're the four areas that we'll be looking at. So when it came to strategy, what we found was that most of the organisations had no strategic plan for their internal communications. And this was quite shocking. A lot of them said that they had a document that related to their internal, that related to their business strategy, but they didn't have an official strategic document. So we wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe, even though they didn't have an actual document, that it was actually strategically planned. But then we looked at the aims and objectives of their communication, and we find that their uh, aims were things like increase employee engagement improve employee awareness of their role, increase awareness of the organization's strategy. If they look familiar to anybody, uh, what we see with these is that they're not really measurable, they're not smart, they're not specific, measurable, achievable, realistic or timed. There's no X or Y here. Increase employee engagement from what to what, in what time frame. So given the fact that uh, talking in tangible results is the way to, make, to get yourself to the management team and the decision makers table, it's highly unlikely, even from the outset looking at these organisations, that they're going to be able to speak the facts and figures language of the C-suite. And really, if you don't know where you're, going, if, where you're going, it's very difficult to actually be able to say that you've reached there. So the second section then, in uh, strategy, what I outlined are three main questions that you absolutely have to be able to answer in relation to your strategy. So we have an internal communication strategy, one to six, one being strongly disagree, six being strongly agree, and uh, uh, you mark it out yourself, everything in between. The second question is, we have a clear picture and vision of how internal communications will contribute to the organization. And the third question is, the objective for all communication activities are SMART. Specific, measurable, achievable, achievable, realistic and timed. And you mark yourself accordingly. So the second section then is on leadership support. And in order to get a seat at the decision making table, you have to be able to speak the facts and figures that everybody else sitting at that decision making table is doing. Now in the organizations that I studied, they said that uh, communication from leadership was rated quite highly, but it, often it didn't translate. The support didn't translate to actual uh, results on the ground. And this is probably uh, captured by one of the respondents who said, communication is important for my CEO, but not as important as everything else. Other things take priority. <laughs> so um, we see here that uh, uh, it's because of, Perhaps we haven't truly sold it to our CEOs. And also, I mean, they've done their MBAs, and, but they, they don't really know what to do when it comes to communication. We have to be the people that guide them through what they actually need to do. So in relation to leadership support, then, there are three questions that you have to be able to answer for yourself. The CEO is committed to and plays his or her role in effective internal communications. And the reason I have committed to and playing their role is because when I interviewed a lot of the organizations, they said, oh yeah, they're very committed. But as we went in depth in the interviews, we found that they weren't actually really committed. They might turn up late, they might be answering their phone during meetings. They say it's important, but it's not really very important. So they have to play their role as well. Uh, senior management are committed to and play their role in effective internal communications. 
So uh, that's uh, coming down from your CEO to your senior management. And then communications is a KPI, so a key performance indicator for all management team members. So then we move on to the third section, which is tools. And this is what Mary Welch was saying yesterday, that uh, very often um, and uh, also then uh, people are busy with outputs rather than outcomes. So they're busy counting the amount of newsletters they produce instead of actually looking at what behavior do I want to either reinforce or change as a result of producing this newsletter. And just as a few examples, one of the organizations I interviewed was very proud in telling me that they were putting all their information on the intranet. That's the way things were moving. But interviews with employees said they hardly use the intranet. <laughs> Another organization said they were very proud of their staff briefings, but interviews with employees said the way the briefings were set up inhibited questions and answers. So the briefings, as far as they were concerned, weren't very useful. Another organization that had 140,000 employees proudly told me that their newsletter was their main way of communicating with their employees. They produced 55,000 newsletters, and they had no way of uh, knowing that those letter, newsletters were even distributed correctly throughout their various different employees. Another organization spent vast amounts of money on engagement surveys each year, but interviews with employees said they felt that it was extremely uh, uh, not worthwhile because every single year the results came out, every single year a team was established to deal with the results, every single year the team did nothing, every single year the team disbanded and the team wasn't heard of again until the following employee survey. And uh, also, as we heard yesterday, uh, social media, a lot of people are jumping into social media, but again, they're going into social media in the same way as they have uh, done previously, as Kevin was saying yesterday. Uh, social media in, is also another tool that people are using, but are we using it strategically? And here we have a little picture of our communicators running around in circles, because when I spoke to the communicators, they said, we're too busy, you don't understand, I don't have time for strategy, I don't have time for measurement. But what they were in effect doing then was they were often involved in activities that weren't actually of any benefit to the organization because they weren't taking time out to actually look at what they were doing. So here they are running around in circles, uh, getting nowhere fast. And as um, Anna said yesterday, a lot of uh, communicators are involved in one-way communication. And really, most effective communication has to be two-way communication. So it has to be measured, evaluated, and it has to be two-way communication. So the questions you have to answer in relation to tools is, the communication tools used reflect the documented needs and preferences of staff. Most of the internal communication activities are two-way, and feedback loops are built into all activities. So then we move on to the final section, which is results and measurements. And here we have our employee. And if you imagine, every single day your employees get up and they decide to come to work or not, commit or not, give their best or not, go that extra mile or not. And certainly as internal communicators, it's our job to engage and motivate these people to make sure that they choose the right t-shirt in the morning. And uh, when I spoke with the case study organizations, um, I got feedback such as, communication is important, but other items take priority. The ones in purple are from the CEOs. Um, can't state in measurable terms how it adds value to the organization. And then these are the feedback from the employees. Communication is a tick box exercise. Management just go through the motions. They don't really, uh, don't really want to hear what I have to say. And then interestingly, this last one was from an organization that had recently introduced effective two-way communication tools. And they said, if I have a good idea, I think my management would listen to it. So the questions you need to ask in relation to answer in relation to results and measurements is, can I produce tangible results in respect of my communication work? Can I establish if managers are meeting their communication uh, key performance indicators. Can I link all communication activity to the organization strategy? And as Drucker says, as communicators, we need to know the business of our business. So it's not just good enough knowing about communication. We have to be able to link it to our organization strategy in order to be really able to prove our worth. So this uh, then brings us to the final part, which is the matrix. And as you can see here, uh, we have uh, strategy development, 
leadership support, communication tools, and measurement and evaluation. And I have already given you the three questions in each of those uh, throughout the presentation. And uh, they add up, so three questions, the highest mark that you can give is six. So that gives you 18. And uh, a proper effective communication should, ha should be a round circle with 18 the whole way around. And uh, uh, when you answer the questions and evaluate yourself, you'll be able to see very quickly what areas of uh, leadership, uh, strategy that are, need to be worked on in your organization. And I think the beauty of this is that it presents communication in a way that your CEO and your management team, who are not communication experts, will be able to grasp very quickly. And the question I suppose I wanted to ask was, in my research, can I establish, uh, can I relate my work to the strategy of the organization? Uh, can I ensure that uh, leaders support communication in the organization? Can I choose tools that meet the needs of my organization? And can I measure and prove my worth to my CEO in my organization? And to paraphrase another a great communicator, Barack Obama, who recently visited our shores in Ireland, yes, we can. And I hope that this tool will be a very effective tool in the arsenal of communicators in the future. Thank you.